ਸਿੱਧ ਜੋਗ ਘਮਾਉ ਸਿੰਘੀ ਸਾਚ ਖਬਰ ਕੰਤਲਾ ਧਿਆਨ ਬਹੁਤ ਚਰਾਉ ਤਾਤੀ ਕੋ ਆਤਮ ਬਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਵਿਚਾ ਨਾਮ ਦਾਰੰ ਬਾਜੇ ਪਰਮ ਤਾਰ ਤਤਾਰ ਕੋ ਉਪਜੈ ਰਾਗ ਰਸਾਰ ਉਗਦੇ ਤਾਨ ਤਰੰਗ ਰੰਗ ਅਤ ਗਿਆਨ ਗੀਤ ਬੰਦਾਨ ਚਕ ਚਕ ਰੇ ਫਰਸਟ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਸੇ ਹਾਈ ਟੂ ਬਿਲ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਈ ਟੂ ਸੈਲਫ ਐਂਡ ਆਮ ਵੈਰੀ ਡਿਲਾਈਟਿਡ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਦੀ ਓਪਰਚੁਨਿਟੀ ਟੂ respond to the questions of uh, Avalonians. Um my name is Simon Parks. I'm a politician, I'm a local elected councillor for the town that I live in. Um and ever since I've been a very young boy, small boy, I've had experiences with uh, what I prefer to call interdimensional or extra-dimensional entities. Uh I've also come from a, a family which people would refer to as an Illuminati background family. Uh, and about 3 3 and a half years ago i decided to go public um with my experiences and my family and i'm very very delighted that uh, i stood for an election after i'd gone public and i was elected uh i'm delighted because the public were able to have access to that information and yet they still chose to elect me uh, and i think that bodes very well for humanity in the future that's a very very hard question my answer will shock people and they won't be the answer they expected and it's the mantids or the mantis and that will really surprise and shock people why because they will expect the pleiadians or the andromedians or mm-hmm. one other humanoid group they won't expect the answer i've just given it's difficult because mantids take part in abductions and a number of people have quite rightly reported mantids have hurt them uh-huh. so for me to sit here and then say well actually the mantids are the human races one of the human races best um uh um i can't use the word get out of jail card but they are one of the most helpful and will become one of the most helpful assets that mm-hmm. humanity can get its hand on but most people will have a great difficulty in understanding that i think also that they are humanoid and so people can uh, connect with with a creature that has a humanoid form and a creature that's not humanoid people will have a problem with trust even people who are beginning to become awake the the reality is that beyond this there is a and i use the word lightly there's a game being played out mm-hmm. and it has been for thousands of years mm-hmm. the mantids are absolutely center to this game um and people don't actually realize that although the mantids are in agreement with the reptiles and have for many thousands of years mm-hmm. but the mantids have their own plan at the end of it indigenously no um transplanted yes so for instance the the adam and eve bases on the moon um or is it the eve base on mars i forget now but of the the, the bases that are currently existent on the moon and mars there is life there but that isn't life that was already there that's life that's arrived there previous existence has long since gone um the other gaseous planets have life but not advanced life in right. its form now I don't accept hollow earth what I do accept is caverns in the earth where facilities can be be placed small cities can be built mm-hmm. but the concept of a hollow earth in terms of a of a, a hollowed out earth no no but certainly if we're talking about um considerable size facilities then I would accept that but not a hollow earth no so by considerable size cities do you mean something like the size of London No that's too big. Okay. No, I would say a population of 100,000. Okay. But the earth is not hollow. No, because if if you imagine if you were to as they often do set explosions off on the earth. Mm-hmm. If it was anything like the moon, you would get a hollow pinging back. But because the sound waves coming back from anything from geological to testing for oil coming back generally um 
showing a solid solid base however there is one part and we were talking about antarctica which mm -hmm. isn't hollow in the true sense of the word hollow earth but there are large cavernous areas there where cities have been in the past and some are active now so you could call it hollow but you Basically. but i don't want to get the imagine like the moon or anything like that that's hollowed out on the inside they don't want you to to imagine a sort of a, a football basically it's not like that a reptilian mentality is one of arrogance power self-assuredness um, absolute belief in uh, the right to dominate others and um, through any force that's necessary um, without love um, absolutely uh, addicted to uh, ritual and ceremony. Uh, a mantid is not uh, a creature that exists to control in terms of <coughs> physical force, but exists to be a referee or an arbiter between different universes, different groups. So the mantid's role is one of um, in a football match being a referee mm -hmm. but it only works if both sides agree that that referee can have the power to decide who is right and who is wrong to prevent <coughs> to prevent uh, massive wars the mantids have actually been given that role by a number of races um, in terms of love no mantids don't have love as humans understand it, but mantids have compassion. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Um, yeah, so I, I much prefer to be in the company of a mantid than I do. If I'm in the company of a mantid, I can be much more relaxed. I don't have to be careful what I'm going to communicate, and I don't have to be on my guard. If I'm in the company of a reptile, I have to be extremely careful what I communicate. Uh, and I have to be on my guard all the time. If you could imagine um, a new oil field found somewhere off the coast of America, mm -hmm. and America has the boats to go and get the oil, but it doesn't have the drilling technology, so it goes to the Germans, and the Germans provide the, the drilling rig, but they don't have actually it should be the optics shouldn't it the Germans should provide the optics um, and the British supply this that and the other in terms of humanity for a very long time a number of alien races have pooled their resources to interact with humanity so to a certain extent the mantid race which is a fourth dimensional race and the reptilian or the draco reptilian which is a fourth dimensional race do share a number of goals and will participate together However, they have their own um, individual uh, goals themselves, which are not necessarily uh, mutually supportive of each other. And having to be careful because um, there's, a, there's a lot to play out mm -hmm. on that particular topic. Those are not valued. Human aliens value things like that and music mm -hmm. they don't um, value that they do value um, being at peace with themselves mm -hmm. and that might be by playing a resonance of sound mm -hmm. which they then feel very comfortable with mm -hmm. um, they don't pursue sports uh, their their pursuit is um, when I say knowledge I don't mean knowledge in the human sense mm -hmm. but knowledge of other races mm -hmm. and how those races can interact with each other that's their pursuit uh, no um, they don't um, we use the term hive mind and you, you are capable of being hooked in to a hive mind mm -hmm. and therefore you will have the knowledge that your grade gives you so any 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 living creature that has a a hierarchical um, system clearly has not evolved
far enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and the mantids know they haven't evolved far enough and they wish to evolve spiritually. That's very important. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are created, then you are either going, in the mantid, you are either going to be a doctor, a computer expert or a pilot, or you're going to be a decision maker, mm -hmm. so what they refer to as a master. So you <coughs> are placed into a stratified area and you will learn the knowledge that you are required to know to, to carry out the function of that task. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to go to an educational establishment to learn that. Doesn't, they don't breathe oxygen. Very interesting. I remember um, in a communication with one and uh, it started to, I don't know if anybody's ever seen and can remember Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator film, Terminator 2. And by the end of the film, Terminator 2, uh, Cameron, by the way, is a very interesting director, but we'll, we'll leave him aside. But at the end of it, the computer had learnt to tell a joke. So the Terminator had begun to understand humour. Mm -hmm. But whether it had understood it or whether it just knew when to interact with it. So these creatures are the same. Um, they don't naturally have humour, but they understand humans. Mm -hmm. And, for instance, when, when interacting with a human, they will use hand gestures, even though they're communicating from mind to mind. Mm -hmm. They will use a hand gesture because they understand that humans use hand gestures um, and therefore it makes the human more at ease. So they, they have learnt mm -hmm. to um, be appropriate around a human, whereas other creatures don't give a damn. Why should they bother? Like the reptilians. Like right, the reptilians. But so mountains do not have a sense of humour, but they will mirror or reflect back mm -hmm. a person's personality uh, in, the, in an attempt to gain some form of acceptance. We'll start with the easy answer, which is first of all the reptiles. The reptiles um, want to remain the status quo. Mm -hmm. They want to, doesn't matter what the technology on the earth is, doesn't matter what your religion is, as long as you are a subservient race, the reptiles are fine with that. So they don't care if, if, if you can do this and do that. Uh, as long as they have ultimate control over you, they don't care. You can be seen to be evolving or developing mm -hmm. as long as you don't throw them off. Um, so that is their that is their goal. Um, there are a key number of human groups who have decided that it is time to end that dominance. Mm -hmm. um, but they can't do it by force on the planet. But they have used force from space. So a physical force has been used. Mm -hmm. Um, and will continue to be used and the key outcome will be um, see, people don't understand this I, I, I'm probably very pedantic but I refer to earth humans and humans mm -hmm. because if you are an earth human that means you have an earth human soul so you have a human body but you have a human soul. That is a soul that's been recycled on Earth for ages. Mm -hmm. But you could have a human body, but have an alien human soul. Mm -hmm. So you could be Lyran, you could be Palladian, mm -hmm. or you could be Syrian, which are the three purest human groups. Mm -hmm. But you're still not human in Earth human times but you are to the greater human. So we have three key players. Lyran, which mm -hmm. is the, the, the purest of the human group, and then you've got the group that split to, to Cyrus, and then you've got the Palladians. The Palladians actually are human, are incredibly warlike. And people don't understand this. They think the Palladians are actually incredibly warlike. And remember when the Palladians came here, there wasn't a single creature that could contain their frequency except the dolphins. The dolphin was the only creature his body was capable of maintaining the frequency of the Palladians and that's why Palladian people are absolutely connected to the water and to dolphins and that is why lots of children will want to go 
to play with the dolphins. Mm -hmm. And did you know in America that it is illegal for any American citizen to have a contact with a dolphin unless it is through an organization? Because the elite know, and the, it is illegal in America for, if you went down to the beach and you saw a dolphin and you touched it, mm -hmm. you could be arrested. Because the elite wow. know. But you have, that's why there are groups in America, organizations, very profitable, and you, know, you can send your kid and you pay lots of thousands of dollars and you can go and swim with the dolphins. Mm -hmm. It's allowed to do that. But they are always uh, infiltrated mm -hmm. by CIA or NSA mm -hmm. um, because they know what's going on. That's why there's so many oil spills. That's why they want to kill dolphins, because of that. So the Palladian group has a very big future on this planet. So have the Lyrans. So you have uh, the Syrians mm -hmm. um, and the Mantis have an important part to play. So those are the key players in the future. And you'll notice that there's one group that's missed out there, which is the reptilian group. Mm -hmm. That's my answer. With any group, you will find splinter groups going off, um, allying, forming. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly don't use Americanisms, I certainly don't buy the idea of large numbers of Palladians forming any sort of alliance with um, uh, reptilian groups simply because they've been at war with them for too long. Uh, and they are totally opposed to the, to the values, each, each of their own values are totally different. No, I don't accept that. I do accept the fact that there may be hybridization where there are Palladian type creatures who have been hybridized with reptilians right. and perhaps themselves they don't know which side of the fence they're on that is possible um, that is much more likely if, if people are reporting seeing these beings I would suggest that that's what they're seeing they think they have reached the pinnacle that there is no further way to go when when um, you were, if you were to have a debate with a senior reptilian, mm -hmm. he would tell you that mammals smell. Mm -hmm. He would tell you that, that mammals have to evolve and change to, to survive and adapt. Um, and that he doesn't have to change because he's been in that form for absolutely millions and millions of years. And reptiles don't need to evolve, therefore they've reached the pinnacle, they've reached the top point, there is nothing better than them. Um, and everyone else is inferior. So that is the mindset. Um, that's not true. Okay. Uh, they have been largely, largely contained. In other words, a number of bases that they were existent on have been taken out. There are still a number of bases where they are. There are just a few hundred left in the earth now, just a few hundred. Right. They are still there, but they are not, um, they're not putting their head up above the parapet, shall we say. Mm -hmm. They're not receiving any reinforcements. That's very important. They can, and they are, mm -hmm. because if they weren't, we would have thrown off the bonds and we would be charging headlong towards freedom. They're still very much pulling the strings and influencing us directly. I would say 90% of them are. Yeah. I would say 90% of them. And the Valon, I would just change that as Jin, which is an interdimensional species. So I would disagree right. with him. To me, the Valon is a name for an interdimensional species, which is the Jinn. If I just very quickly talk about the Jinn, uh -huh. it's something that's very little on the internet, very little read about. Um, when humanity arrived here, mm -hmm. uh, its consciousness expanded, and the dominant life form on the planet in a non-physical form was a Jinn. Mm -hmm. And when human expansion of its consciousness uh, took place, the jinn were forced out of the third dimension, but not quite into the fourth. Mm -hmm. So they inhabited the space between the third and the fourth. As a result of that, they absolutely hated humanity. They are related to the reptilians. The reptilians were working with humans, 
and the reptilians did not allow the jinn to take reprisal actions against the humans. And because this uh, jinn or velon exist between the third and the fourth dimension, they're accessible from the third, and so the, the reptilians trained certain members of what we call the Illuminati mm -hmm. to have the power to conjure or bring forth these creatures mm -hmm. and they use them um, predominantly to attach to humans um, humans that they are very interested in and so this is part of the magic that they can they can pull through uh, in the Western world we really think of elves fairies goblins and jinn we don't understand it but in the Eastern world yeah, uh, the Quran yeah. not only talks about them but how to get rid of them right. and if we think about the, the, the stories we have of Aladdin and the lamp and mm -hmm. the word genie mm -hmm. is just simply jinn but unfortunately in the West we're forgetting our learning yes okay. very much so very much so interesting because um, the Quran uh, unlike the Bible is enmeshed into the law of many mm -hmm. uh, Muslim countries mm -hmm. and they understand the energetic not just the physical mm -hmm. and they believe that all all evil is created by the jinn the demon race so when they see a UFO they will just say that's a jinn so I it is so. the human perception of right. that is a gin. Well, you, you see that sometimes now because with, with uh, researchers have a heck of a job to decide whether uh, a person is reporting a shadow being or a gin. So that, 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 you know, if you are, uh, mindset is, well, everything is a gin or everything is this, then everything you see is that. I mean, the, the Iranian Air Force has intercepted countless UFOs, but the, the public, who are very, very strong in their Islamic law, uh, wouldn't begin to discuss a UFO. Mm -hmm. To them, it would be a demon in the sky. Right. But the Iranian military would know it was a UFO. So the, it's just the way it's, it's handled. I know when, when David Icke um, started talking about this, he lost an awful lot of people because mm -hmm. that was the, the point that a lot of people lost it and couldn't cope with it. Um, and it's very, very difficult for, for someone to um, come to terms with. Uh, I personally have seen people change mm -hmm. and it's, it seems perfectly normal to me. Um, I think when I did my tele vision documentary I did mention that uh, I was in a car with a young woman mm -hmm. and we were both taken but what I didn't mention because the documentary wasn't uh, to be trusted mm -hmm. <laughs> the people I weren't to be trusted but I can talk to other Lonians um, when we returned back in the car there was a great deal of missing time and at that moment I didn't remember what had happened it did take me a few hours to get back the young woman with me um, didn't remember. Now she had a complete reptilian soul and in, in height she was five foot uh, about five foot five, five foot five and a half mm -hmm. and when we got back and uh, she was absolutely drenched in sweat and she came up to give me a hug because she was scared and where her head should have come up to here mm -hmm. her head was up here and the first thing I did was look down to say have you still got your shoes on and she'd taken her shoes off, and I had taken my shoes off. And so what we did from that point on, we put a chart up against the wall, and every sort of four or five hours, we'd stand her against it and mark it. I mm -hmm. still got the chart, I kept it, um, and she increased about three inches. Now, modern science can't accept that. Mm -hmm. Modern science could not and would not accept it. The reality is that she had genetics in there, in her body, and her body was attempting to return to its normal size, which would have been, God knows, eight, eight. nine, <laughs> ten feet, something like that. But in a human body, you restrain, you, you mm -hmm. can't do that. But it was had enough genetics in it to allow that to change. And I 
personally witnessed over a one week period two spikes where she put on two and a half inches mm -hmm. and then went back down to normal and then again which meant two abductions two mm -hmm. takes in a one week period mm -hmm. um, and she was the one that said to me quite clearly her brother she's seen her brother's back completely morph into scales um, I fully accept it um, and I have no problem with it it's exactly what I would expect because yeah. how can you dominate a uh, a population mm -hmm. unless you look like them Mm -hmm. you have to look like them because they won't accept you otherwise well they would in the old days because they would be your gods yeah. so that's absolutely fine but humanity has moved on now it can't accept that but it can accept to be told what to do by people that look like them well it's, it's, it's far by far humans actually they're not, they're not off world they're on world um, Many, many, many years ago when um, the reptilian race reasserted itself and said to the, what would become the ruling elite, uh, we'll do a deal with you. This is the magic that we'll give you um, and this is the power we'll give you. But in return for that, this, right. is, what, this is what we want. Um, they sort of led the, um, the agenda and it's the last 10-15 years the human elite have begun to split from their so-called overlords and this is what's led to a lot of infighting um, so it, I, can, I would put my hand on my heart and say to you it's Draco reptilians but it's majoritively now a satanic group of the Illuminati um, who, who are hell-bent on holding the planet in a way that gives them absolute superior power two major groups. One group which still sees these creatures as their saviour or their get out of jail free card. Right. Another group which feels that they've reneged on their deals to present the new world order because they should have had the new world order by now. They should have been well and truly on their way. It's been held up. It's been stopped. Um, and so that group is saying that they want to go it on, it gone on their own. Um, so they are uh, fighting within themselves. But the group that is beholden to their masters um, very much enthralled to them. <coughs> you, you, you must understand that when the deal is made with these individuals, they are given true magic. I don't mean pulling a white rabbit out of a, a magician's mm -hmm. hat. I mean the ability to create, to conjure forth a djinn, the, the ability to uh, be in a room of people and to manifest a butterfly and for people to actually physically see a butterfly flying around the room and attempt to catch the butterfly and take it outside. That's a, a form of magic, a form of mind control mm -hmm. that these people have been given the art of um, and they don't want to lose that. They don't want to lose that skill, whereas other groups of humans want the more physical control, which is the physical control of humanity. And so they're not so into that, they're into the military side of it. So you have a very interesting, well, I think it's interesting division between the elite now. Well, both, because the ships are interdimensional. The ships will go from, <coughs> excuse me, the fourth dimension and arrive in the third and solidify into the third. Although um, a lot of the, the energetic bodies, um, the majority of those creatures will remain in an energetic form, in a protected environment and only some will come through, but they require a huge amount of energy to maintain their, um, their physical form. Mm -hmm. And those creatures would have arrived by ship when they created them, their base here. They created a safe haven for themselves under the ground where uh, it was like their own home that was built. It was on a very impoverished scale, but it meant they didn't have to go back mm -hmm. uh, for regular topping up for want of a better word. Mm -hmm. So they had their own world. The reason they chose to be underground was because the, the humans had moved on and wouldn't accept them in their true form. Therefore they had to remain underground, but they had to create connect with the elite governments of the world mm -hmm. so that they controlled through proxies, basically, which is what several people in government are.
the many of the grey races are. I mean, I, I do. I've made it public. I don't like the greys. I really mm -hmm. don't have time for them. Um, however, there's a lot of humanity in some of them, um, and many of them are victims. They are trapped themselves, and they'll consistently attempt to undermine what I would call a program. So uh, that's why abductees sometimes report uh, not returning to their bed or returning with their clothes on back to front or returning into the front garden mm -hmm. or returning somewhere else. That's not through a mistake. People don't understand. They think that's a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's the greys deliberately sabotaging the program because they are manipulated by the reptilians and it's their way of fighting back. I've personally witnessed that, and I made that clear in a video some four years ago, I think three years ago, where I saw a group of humans sitting in a facility um, underground, and a grey, small grey, um, one metre tall, standing by the side of them, and um, the grey not taking responsibility for the humans, mm -hmm. um, and attempting to argue. And so often the case will be that somebody i say somebody, a grey can get away with something that appears to be against the instructions of mm -hmm. their masters simply because they are being allowed to get away with it at a local level. Mm -hmm. uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't stop a very grand plan um, and in fact I've talked about the Roswell event and, mm -hmm. I've, and I've made it clear in my view the Roswell event was a planned event to seed technology onto the earth. You see the thing is that technically no alien race may give a present to a inferior race. And when I say inferior I don't mean spiritually, I mean technologically. So if you go back to earth history, um, the white man would arrive on some foreign island and he would give a, a load of glass beads mm -hmm. to the native chief and the native chief would give him half of his village. That's not allowed. Right. So in order to offer those presents, you have to create a situation where in law you can say, well, I didn't give it to them. It crashed it. and they took it yeah. and they did with it what they would. So to me, for those who know their history, Roswell was a real event and it was a Trojan horse. And I'll just finish off and explain why it's a Trojan horse. Prior to Roswell, if I'm an off-worlder and I want to, to know what's going on. I've got two possibilities. I can either get into your mind or I physically have to have an agent break into the FBI or the CIA, go through old fashioned filing cabinets, mm -hmm. just like you do in the old spy days, and get those hard copies. As soon as we became digitalized, they can sit thousands of miles off the earth and just access that information. So it has it has yes it's advanced humanity, but it is advanced their information gathering tenfold. Any race that willingly or foolishly gives up its sovereignty um, has a lot to answer for. Any race that uh, sells itself because something is offered to it uh, and doesn't have the ability to connect with its higher self and ask am I being offered something that is good for me um, to be offered eternal life to be offered a body that never breaks down um, to be offered wonderful technology if only you do this mm -hmm. um, so anything that's got that in its history I would have a real problem with and the Zetas do they do have that Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me say that I have the highest regard, uh, he's passed on now, but for Zachariah Stitchin. Um, I think he was an excellent, excellent academic. Uh -huh. um, and he did genuinely interpret the tablets correctly. Right. Um, what I'm suggesting is that the tablets were planted and the information on those tablets or some of those tablets was actually inaccurate. Um, 
the, the plan, the long-term plan for those who would rule us would be for us to accept any particular type of alien as our creators. And because if you look on an alien force as a god force, um, you are then um, very, very, very beholden to that creature and you feel that you are inferior to that creature. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was trying to alert people to the fact that um, this material found in, I don't know which level of the, of the mound that they were found in, is actually inaccurate and has been planted to make people think that the Anunnaki created humanity. What I've always said is that what they did was alter us. Human yeah. humanity was already existent upon the earth, mm -hmm. but it was altered. The, the, the people um, generally think of the Pleiadians as the good guys uh -huh. and the reptilians as the bad guys. Mm -hmm. I think what I would say is that the Pleiadians are particularly warlike. Um, they are far more benevolent to humanity. Uh, Pleiadians um, dislike the fact that humans have been manipulated, that humans don't have the uh, full information at their fingertips to make the choice. So the Palladians are a, a race of people who have off and on fought reptilian groups mm -hmm. and have aligned themselves with other uh, alien forces who are um, against the reptile, reptile forces. And, and the Palladians have for some considerable time um, played a beneficial uh, effect upon humanity on Earth. Taking out the evolutionary side of it, because obviously people in a hot country uh, have the pigmentation of the skin black. Um, in terms of genetics and alien mixing, um, the, the, sad, the sad thing is that racism springs from the reptilians. Mm -hmm. That's exactly like so many things done, being, being territorial, um, you know, wanting wars, being greedy, arrogant, that all comes from values that the reptilians have given yeah. humanity. Um, and white was always seen as the superior colour. So the, 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 the Lord Reptile was white, all the ruling elite reptilians. And that particular group, the Draco group, are white. Almost albino because they have red eyes. So therefore white became the ruling colour and in ceremonies the non-white reptiles mm -hmm. will wear white sashes across their bodies. Sometimes they are just one sash, sometimes there's a cross sash. Uh, therefore they were always going to work with the white races because that was the way they had it and because they felt that way when they were putting the control implants, and I don't mean a physical implant, mm -hmm. into humans' minds, they did not work with the black races, they worked with the white races, with the result now that it is very hard for a, 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 a reptilian or what have you to take control or mind control a black person because they do not have the access codes to a black person in the same way they have to a Caucasian simply because when they were doing their they're dumbing down and they're, they're, they're altering of the human mind. Mm -hmm. They left the black races alone. However, they did make contact with a number of black races and one of them is the Zulu tribe. Mm -hmm. They met with the Zulu tribe and imparted the warlike um, strength to them. And that is why the, the Zulus were absolutely unbeatable uh, for their own time. And that's why they gave the whites such a hard battle because they had the values given to them from their chiefs who had been in contact. But when, when they made contact with them, they didn't do it in the same way they did with the white people. Mm -hmm. They wanted them to be a powerful race. Um, and then you've got people who are mixtures, such as in South America, mm -hmm. again, they would be seen as a white race. I'm very concerned with any organizations that um, almost create a, a guru or a godlike stance mm -hmm. um, I would counsel people to totally ignore anything coming from that particular mouthpiece
You see, I, I never, I never believed all this new age rubbish. I mean, there was yeah. a lot of new age rubbish that was put out, um, and some of it was very well meant, and some of it was actually designed to uh, skew the argument. Yeah. Um, it, it, it definitely peaked two to three days either side of that critical date, um, and you know, I, I went on Avalon. I talked about the CERN, the Hadron Collider, mm -hmm. and how that didn't work. Um, so. It, we, it's, a, it's a long drawn out end game, but the, the bad guys have the ability to hurt and cause an awful lot of pain. The question is how much will they be allowed to make? An attempt by the Americans to form a one world government, the attempt by the Americans to have martial law, uh, the attempt to try to um, either chip people or, or massively kill people. Uh, it, it's got to be played out very quickly. I also expect if that doesn't work directly, uh, a false alien invasion or a false epidemic. Mm -hmm. So I think all the big things have got to be played because 2016 is the final chance they have. They'll get no more uh, resources coming through and they're, if they're on here this earth, they're trapped on this earth, they have to create their life for themselves. So between now and 2016, uh, I'm surprised Obama hasn't done more. No, um, because I don't believe in them. Um, if there was a, a talk some time ago of the, the polls shifting and this happening, uh, I can honestly tell you if the polls shifted, half the population of the world would be wiped out. If the polls actually changed and the earth flipped over, or the ice moved one way, uh, you'd, you'd have had very little humanity left magnetic north is changing mm -hmm. that is definitely changing but that does change 700,000 years ago there was a complete polarity shift right so north pole was south and south mm -hmm. was north that was 700,000 years ago that's different from a a, a movement on your uh, on your axis in terms of flipping the whole earth around yeah now then um i think it's highly likely that the north of, of japan at some point will disappear highly likely that the north of Japan will just disappear under, under the water. So there will be um, some very, very severe consequences for the people of Japan mm -hmm. and any of the islands around. I don't rule out local changes, but I don't envisage a massive collapse of humanity mm -hmm. in terms of that, no. Yeah. Simply because the, the, the aliens who have such an investment in humanity wouldn't allow it to happen. Very good question, actually. Um, they have to be within uh, a few a few thousand miles. Just a few thousand. Yes. You really have got to believe that you can make change. You also have to practice. Some people go into deep breathing, some people do meditation, other people just don't seem to need to do any of that, they can just do it. Depends on, on where you are in the developmental process. Um, if you know something is wrong, you have to wish and think and believe, not just I want something better, but I will make it better. This is going to happen. I, I am going to make this happen. And you're going to make it happen for out of love and for the right reasons. And if you believe in that strong enough, um, and others across the planet are joining you mm -hmm. in that you can effect change. And Avalon would be an ideal place to start with then, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. For instance, for me, passive resistance is if you know that the Americans have many, many, many hundreds of thousands or millions of rounds of dum-dum bullets uh, for the sole intention of arming elite units of troops and then causing as much death as they can. Passive resistance is actually uh, attempting to get into the minds of those individual soldiers and showing them the, the consequences of their actions and showing them that there is an alternative. Um, and then they will, they will go on with that as they will.
I've always made it clear everywhere that I don't um, say that people need to create violence to mm -hmm. um, prevent this. Uh, and a lot of people cannot understand that because even people who are awake, they live in a physical world and they don't understand the full importance of, of the ability to change a physical situation mm -hmm. by your own um, mental thought, your own mental processes linked into your soul. Um, what is happening and will continue to happen is the American military will thwart the attempts being made to basically detonate a nuclear bomb or to um, bring some form of agreement around. Mm -hmm. so, so key elements, and that's why we saw Obama get rid of three of his top, top generals mm -hmm. very recently because they refused to detonate a nuclear bomb or mm -hmm. to at least move a nuclear bomb. But that's not the first time that's happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, then there's uh, over a year ago the situation with uh, with Clinton, uh, not Mr. Clinton, <laughs> but Hillary Clinton, um, which I made I spoke on Avalon about, um, and I think that every individual person has to be aware of what is happening, and people don't understand that the, the consciousness level of an individual, when matched with many, many, many thousands of individuals can actually change reality. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I keep saying to people, you don't have to get a gun and barricade yourself in, because that's what a lot of these questions are about. What mm -hmm. do I have to do? And I don't want people to go out there and put themselves in danger, because then you are fighting fire with fire, yeah. and that's not going to work. When, when humanity was first kicked off, very, very few people remembered who they were. Now we are 2013 and there are quite a lot of people over the planet who have woken up and remembered who they are, become aware of who they are. Um, and it's that tipping point. Uh, it's about those people um, projecting their vision, their reality, and others who are not yet awake mm -hmm. picking up on that. So these people are, um, it's like if you put a, 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 if you have a barrel full of, let's just say, um, red coloured balls and you put a blue one in and then and one of the red ones turns blue and over a period of time the colour change is perceptible. Mm -hmm. So the larger group begin to change its dynamic and that's what's happening with the people over the earth who are uh, imprinting, is a good word to use, values and, and ideals which force others to change uh, and I say force, they don't mean force as in force with a gun but force, they look in themselves and they'll look to see what is around them and say I choose not to do this but I choose to do that and that is what's happening so in the mix, yeah it is, that's a very good word, we are in the mix mm -hmm. but people are doing a good job There are a number of councils and what's happened in the last perhaps seven, eight years would be um, a group of uh, off-worlders who for many, many thousands of years had not taken any interest in humanity and then did. Mm -hmm. And they formed a council, a group of um, humanoid beings right. who felt that it wasn't fair to ask humans on earth to make a decision when they weren't free and they didn't have all the facts to their uh, fingertips. However, because they can't physically intervene on earth, mm -hmm. they had to intervene in other ways. Um, a lot of the UFOs that are shot down are shot down in wars up there now mm -hmm. between different groups. That's the physical side that, that people sometimes film and you get genuine ones on YouTube from time to time. But energetically, the best way to raise the awareness is to get your agents down into the planet. But if you're a truly, truly loving that rate, you don't order people to do it. No. You just say, if you want to help, mm -hmm. step forward. And so what's been happening in increasing numbers are people who have um, decided that the love for the for the great for the good is the greater number. In other words, they are giving up their own individual um, life 
to take a body which doesn't really suit them. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is, of course, that when they come in, most of them don't remember why they're here, mm -hmm. what they're supposed to do. So the question is, do they wake up? Do they reactivate themselves? Mm -hmm. does, does, does that switch click on and they suddenly realise who they are, what they've got to do? It doesn't happen as much as it should do, but many people do, particularly with the children. The children are um, becoming um, immune to the switch off system. So in other words, many children now are awake immediately, uh, two and three and four years old. Um, and that is, that is prevalent and that is why the elite target children um, and attempt to control them through mind control, through energetic beings, through uh, sonic weapons, whatever it might be. Uh, and that is why uh, children are all to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. That is why it's fluoride in the toothpaste, mm -hmm. because humanity is waking, waking up um, and the system is just trying everything it can to stop that from happening. Right. Well, they originally did, mm -hmm. because if, if everything goes to plan, we will end up 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th dimension. So these creatures that are on the 5th, 6th, 7th dimension originally did inhabit physical worlds. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on <coughs> their choice. Uh, if you are an energetic being, you still have a body, mm -hmm. but your body is an energetic body, but it is somewhat denser than what's inside you. It has mm -hmm. to be for the inside to retain in there. But if you choose as a people that you no longer want to live in the house, you want to live in another environment, then you will do that. So it, it, you could have a sixth and seventh dimension creature living in something that, that people would recognise as a house. <coughs> it may look very different, mm -hmm. but they would recognise it as a structure. There would be other creatures that would just uh, be invisible and would just exist in the air, because right. that's what they've chosen to do. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's down to what they have chosen, which is actually a lot to do with their history and where they've come from. The more connected to nature you are, mm -hmm. the less you need the physical. Mm -hmm. The more rooted in the physical you are, the less you can let go of it. Yes. The reality to let go. Yes. The humans to let go of what they've only known since they were children, to what they've only been told. To let go of putting their trust in others putting their trust in the physical world and to trust themselves and to find others that they can actually trust as well and mm -hmm. connect with those people mm -hmm. um, and just believe in good can change timelines, yes. can change yes. reality. Absolutely. And, and that's what it's always been about here. It's about enough people getting off their backsides, as we say in Britain, mm -hmm. and evolving and changing and grasping the opportunities we got enough we needed three million people own only three million on the whole of the earth to actually become awake and that happened we got three million and something mm -hmm. so there was it's not stoppable now the no. whole point is it's going to happen but the question is how rough will that ride be how rough is that ride going to be and that is that is the real issue If you want to be, mm -hmm. that's all I can say. If you want to yeah. be, you will. Uh, I don't understand a word of that because the, the the evolution of humanity, the next real evolution, isn't the smaller transistor or or a better motor car. The the evolution is is spiritually in the mind. Um, it is true that every tree and every rock has an imprint of its history, and it has the Earth's imprint, and you can access those codes, mm -hmm. and you can do that. But I don't understand. I, I don't want you to repeat the question, but I don't understand the, the, the concept of machines 
and that part that part of me sounds you no know, to me the, the evolution that humanity must make is one that the technology is hand in glove with spiritual advancement absolutely <clears throat> no this human machine civilization I do not does understand not that. resonate no i don't understand all. i just don't understand it Ah, no, that's not quite right. Um, not in Christianity, in the Garden of Eden. Um, the, the, the story is put about that um, God pushed out Adam and Eve mm -hmm. from the Garden of Eden. Um, and you know, what, what loving God would actually do that? Yeah. This is, it goes back to the early question you asked about the Sumerian clay tablets. Mm -hmm. um, the story is that, you know, we were created by the reptile race, the Anunnaki, therefore right. we need to be very uh, humble and very thankful. And what I was told was that that wasn't the case at all. Um, the creature that is the reptilian king lord is not our god mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, and it was just made very clear to me that he was not our creator. Mm -hmm. and therefore it's a fundamental point and I've always held true that but Adam and Eve split the groups into two groups not just male and female mm -hmm. but all the humans were into two groups Eve led one group and Adam led another group and that is why the bases on the moon and Mars mm -hmm. are referred to as Adam and Eve because of the exodus that took place from, from the Garden of Eden which is linked to the exodus that took place when the Jews left Egypt and when the humans left the earth. Adam and Eve were the bases. So what happened was that um, Adam and Eve took the humans away because they found out that the creature they had called their Lord God mm -hmm. was in fact not their Lord God. And this is where you get the word, and you know, I do have to be careful because I respect people's religion um, and I'm not about trying to hurt them or upset them. Um, you know, our God in heaven mm -hmm. and reality where there were five or six places <coughs> around Mesopotamia and possibly South America which were safe havens mm -hmm. and in the one in Eden was the God so he was the God in haven mm -hmm. he was the God in the safe haven and that's where we get our God in haven from um, and it's a, a massive realisation when the thing that you have thought made you actually didn't. And that's what caused the great schism. And that's why the reptile lord was saying, who's told you? How did you find out? Mm. Who has told you? And this is where you get the two reptiles, the one working against the other, one maintaining the status quo and the other trying to break the status quo up. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's where that comes from. Kind of sounds a bit like Inky and Enlil. I haven't had those names, but I know there was one father and two sons. Yes. But I don't ever recall the names. No, we've, we've had that. That started, and it's, it's an incremental process. But what will happen is there will be physical things happening that, that, that you know, um, governments will attempt to do mm -hmm. and this will force people to choose which side of the fence they're on um, so something will happen which is not an alien event <coughs> it's a human event oh, yeah. and that that will accelerate the process uh -huh. for those people who are saying well I'm not having any part of that that seems wrong <coughs> and then they'll go and do their own research and then they'll start to change so that will be what the the, 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 the energetic change but it is not the true energetic change that started on the 21st of December. Uh, have you also found that there are almost like energy surges? Yeah, well if if, if some of the, the the star, the sun, is uh -huh. an important part in the regulation um, of the frequency, and I know, you know we have to be careful because there's a lot of new age nonsense portrayed around this, but um, It can be altered to speed up the process. Things can be done 
to speed up the process. The problem with it is that a process is supposed to be natural. Right. And if you interfere with a natural process too far, mm -hmm. then it's not free will. But there will be certain peaks mm -hmm. that are occurring which are not totally natural, which are designed to speed up, I call it level the playing field quicker. Because okay. we're running out of time, you see, in terms yeah. of that. We've, yeah. got, we've, got to, we've got to level the playing field. Humans have got to be in a, in a position where they, they have all the information to make a choice. Right. Because if they don't make that choice within a few years, mm -hmm. it will be too late anyway. They will become sterile. They won't be able to give birth. They won't be able to create children. That's what will happen. Because they will be so out of tune with yes, the planet. Yes. The planet will actually reject them and they will no longer be connected to the planet. And the planet will therefore say, well, you, you're on my back, you're mm -hmm. not part of me, and they, these people won't, won't be able to have children. That's what will happen. So before that, there will be what you're describing, which is the psychological breakdown, where mm -hmm. um, they will just simply go mad mm -hmm. because they cannot make those changes because they're just not designed to make those changes. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to remove it, just like any good program, mm -hmm. they will become sterile. So that through a natural process, no one's going to be put against a wall and shot. Right. Through a natural process of evolution, they will just die out, mm -hmm. relieving the new species that can survive and adapt mm -hmm. and change. Um, there are definitely friends helping. That, that's the first thing to say. Uh, the CERN device could create a huge amount of energy which the design was to affect that wave of energy which you have already mentioned that was coming down and to um, fracture it in such a way as it would hold up or slow down the process of ascension for humanity. Um, I'd been on Avalon and I can't remember who it was now who had uh, found uh, an, a, a Mayan or an Aztec guy whose name I can't pronounce correctly but something like Akhtar who uh, was banging on about the CERN generator and somebody on Avalon had said Simon have you seen this because this guy is saying what you've said and I thought my goodness this is amazing and he was what we would call the backstop he was going out all around South America where the hidden pyramids under the jungles or, 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 or buried under the earth and right. planting sacred objects uh -huh. and what he said that he'd been told was that the CERN device was going to um, come on, darling? The CERN device was going to uh, have very negative impact on South America in particular, but would hold up human humans' ascension. Now he didn't know it, and I didn't know it, and that's why it's very important that one left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. But he was the backstop. If the CERN device had worked, mm -hmm. everything would have fallen on him. But as it happened, the CERN device did not work. Therefore, we didn't have to face that issue. We didn't require him, but what he did was right. Um, what they'll do, they'll say they're looking for boson Higgs particles, they're looking for dark energy. They'll, they'll blind people with science and give them um, references to something that, that NASA has put out on the internet at some point in the past. Um, that there are um, many, many institutes who are funded to look for these particles. Um, and it sounds very convincing. Uh, the question I say to people is, hang on a minute, this is built by a consortium, right? Mm. There are no shareholders. Uh, who, who money mad in this world would invest millions of pounds if there was nothing back for them? Business people don't do that. No. They don't give money if there's no return. So they're not going to give millions of pounds for something um, to find a boson's Higgs particle, which some chap's going to get a, a, a Nobel award for but they're not going to get any hard cash. And the reality was that the United States of America put pressure on all of its allies to raid their black budgets to pay for the CERN device. So it is run by America uh, and didn't work. It didn't work when they needed it to work, which is good. But have they given up on it? No, they haven't. Um, after the um, terrible, terrible earthquake for Japan, mm -hmm. 
which brought Japan to its knees. People don't realise that Japan was a net exporter prior to the terrible disaster. It's now a net importer. That's how they've, they've been turned upside down. And they have accepted the fact that the next collider will be built in Japan. It's not going to be... Um, the question was whether to build a linear collider or a circular collider, because they are they all do different things. But the Japanese have agreed that the next collider will be built in Japan. And, and the thinking there is, well, look, if we build a collider, we won't have another earthquake, will we? Wow. So that's, that's the, the next... So that is what they're building. The question is, the argument now um, is how much Japan is going to be expected mm. to pay for it. I think the Americans expected the Japanese to pay for all of it. Um, and the Japanese have shown a bit of muscle and said they're not going to pay for all of it. So they're debating now how much, but the work will soon be started. Yes. Oh, right, OK. Um, we mentioned this a little earlier, I did mention it earlier, the mm -hmm. three generals who were removed. Yes. Um, People, people need to understand that when in, in America, mm -hmm. which is the important one, it doesn't matter who wins, whether they're Republican or Democrat, they are both controlled, uh, except for Kennedy. Uh, mm -hmm. They are controlled. Well, after Kennedy, it's, that's mm -hmm. the rule. Uh, in Britain, it's somewhat different. Um, individuals can actually raise to power that are not uh, the, the, the backer of, of some, perhaps talk about that later. Um, but Obama was placed in mm -hmm. because he had certain things he promised to do. One of them was the health care bill. Mm -hmm. uh, he promised to get that through and he won the second uh, election. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sad thing was that when he came to office, everyone said he is going to be the one who will announce UFOs. Well, they were partly right because what they picked up on was that he was so involved with that side of it that he was going to have the agenda but it wasn't the agenda of disclosure mm -hmm. it was the agenda of forcing things through at a way that had never happened since the days of bush mm -hmm. so um can you just go back to the car i don't want to go off target too much what was the the, the gist of it because I, I could go on for ages on that and i don't want to um many people are infected direct assistance yeah um so right um in the last 30 years, there's probably been about five or six attempts to do something really, really horrendous. Mm -hmm. If you go back a few years to, uh, to Israel, um, the Israeli Prime Minister ordered an attack without anyone else's knowledge on Iran. And he had a chief of staff, the Air Force General and the Infantry General all refused a direct order from a legally elected prime minister to attack Iran. The three refused because they said it would cause a world war. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I meant by things are happening. And the thing with Hillary Clinton, where um, Clinton was uh, being sent to not talk to the president, I beg your pardon, I'm going to get it right now, the spiritual leader of Iran. The spiritual leader of, the, of Iran is not controlled by the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. But the prime minister or president, I think it's a president, I get confused, he is. He is a member of the Illuminati. And so Hillary Clinton was flown in um, specifically to have a meeting with him without the knowledge of the imam, without the spiritual leader knowing. And when the aeroplane arrived at Tehran airfield, the leader of the bodyguards, it's always a SEAL team, the bodyguards are not CIA or NSA, the bodyguards are always SEAL, Navy SEAL teams. The, the, the uh, lead bodyguard, the commander of the bodyguard, shot Clinton with a handgun. Didn't obviously kill her, shot her. He then attempted to shoot his way into the cabin Mm -hmm. and to try to shoot the two the pilots of the airplane. He was then shot and killed by the remaining bodyguards. The plane landed on the airport but skewed off. Mm -hmm. Another plane was sent immediately to recover. And that is why the news said that Hillary Clinton had had a fall or had some form of 
accident that had happened and that is why she lost her job because that SEAL guy knew that she was earmarked to be President of the United States after Obama mm. and he, he had had a message from a much higher being to take her out. Now if you do a web search you'll find that they admit to the fact that this guy is dead, mm -hmm. that the, the lead of the SEAL team, Clinton's bodyguard, is dead and what they say is he died in the training base. That's not true, mm -hmm. he died as I've described it. Um, and this is what's happening. So the, 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 the elite are actually fighting now amongst themselves, but they're also fighting against humans mm -hmm. who are in positions of responsibility, but are making a choice to not accept the environment they're in. And they're making a free will choice. In this case, this guy decided to shoot and kill, mm -hmm. but he didn't kill her. But this is what's happening. And, and this is what obviously doesn't make it to the news. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that a fifth dimensional or sixth dimensional person said, you will kill this person. No. But what they've said is, do you realize that, that this person is earmarked for this? And if this goes ahead, this is the likely outcome. Mm. Then that human has to make a choice what he or she is going to do mm. about it. So that, that's, that's what happens. Definition of a soul. The definition, <laughs> it's my definition, it doesn't mean it's the the one and only definition and mm -hmm. um, that to me that is really what you are uh, we use the, I use the term soul because that seems to be the one in the Bible it seems to be the one that's closest to um, what I would uh, think that people would understand uh, that is really you you inhabit a physical body and it is the soul that is you um, souls can be not owned but they can be imprisoned mm -hmm. and captured but they can't be owned, but they can be um, constrained. Um, well, anybody who's got the technology and the mind power to do it, but it would only be somebody who is negative, because if you were a free-loving creature, you wouldn't attempt to do that. Um, so uh, the, the soul only leaves a body when the body is incapable of maintaining that mm -hmm. soul any longer. Um, the soul will know when the body is going to die mm -hmm. and it will leave before the body dies. It doesn't leave on the death of the body, it leaves mm -hmm. just beforehand mm -hmm. because it cannot be in a body that's dead. Right. So it has to leave, it then goes back to what we try to call source but is intercepted before it gets to source, mm -hmm. is captured, the energetic memory banks for that soul are wiped clean it is then sent back to earth to reincarnate in another baby that baby then grows up and nine times out of ten has no memory of its past life mm -hmm. so what happens when this breaks down we look at edison thomas edison people who invent electricity they didn't invent electricity they rediscovered electricity mm -hmm. they reconnect with their past lives mm -hmm. and they suddenly through that reconnection they start to do experiments, they don't know why they do them, they're doing their experience, they're interested in science and they suddenly find they've created electricity. But that soul in that body, probably maybe 2,000 years ago, was a scientist working for a pharaoh and electroplating stuff and work with electricity. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't always work. I give a good example, when I was 15 years old, um, I used to babysit uh, John Lennon's father, mm -hmm. Freddie, Freddie Lennon, he was known as Alfred Lennon, but to his friends right. was Freddie Lennon, and because of my Illuminati background, mm -hmm. um, I was asked to babysit Freddie Lennon's two children. Freddie Lennon remarried, and he was 54, mm -hmm. and she was 19. Oh my goodness. Um, but that's what happened in the Illuminati grouping. Yeah. Although, although Freddie didn't, he came from a very, very um, poor background but was brought into the mm -hmm. system much later on because of his son John. The point I'm making is that John Lennon had a son. Mm -hmm. uh, John Lennon could play the piano at five. John Lennon's son could play the piano at five. Freddie Lennon, through a different woman, the mother's name was Pamela, had a boy, uh, 
uh, and that boy at the age of five could play the piano. So how is it then that these individuals are all happening? And what modern science says is, oh, it's genetics. Mm -hmm. It isn't genetics. Is that that line, that family, were clearly involved in music. And so when those spirits have come through, they've remembered. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care, gifted children playing piano at three and four years old, that doesn't happen physically. Something happens. And so yeah. this is the cap. So, so if a soul is captured, it's, this is a prison planet. Mm -hmm. This is a prison planet. Um, and we're here simply to supply the reptiles with energy. And that's what it's all about. And that's what we've got to break. This is something that a lot of people were quite rightly um, spending a lot of time on. Um, we've talked about the white light, mm -hmm. um, and humans are conditioned through their life here to always look towards the light. Mm -hmm. um, Hollywood will show films of people having near-death experiences, and suddenly at the light at the end of the tunnel, we say that word, don't we, light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. they walk towards the light, and hey-ho, and in fact I think one, one very good thing might be... Um, um, I can't remember, Russell Crowe played in a gladiator film, I think, and he had a near-death experience, mm -hmm. and it was very bright white light. So don't, if you see bright white light, it's a mousetrap, mm -hmm. that's why it's there. What you must do is turn yourself away from it uh, in exactly the opposite direction mm -hmm. and travel in that. Mm -hmm. And again, you will find the white light come towards you again that trap will come there and you must turn away from it and you must just say in your mind I seek to return to where I'm from mm -hmm. I seek the source and you will keep doing it and you will either be successful or you won't it's as simple as that but if you return to source mm -hmm. the interesting thing is that you will reconnect mm -hmm. and you will remember everything yeah. that has occurred and this is what needs to happen everybody needs to reconnect because all the mistakes that mankind has made mm -hmm. will be removed like that because we'll mm -hmm. say we don't want to do that again and you imagine, you imagine, say, um, a cure for cancer. Right. You, you think if you take a, a genuine, genuine scientist who really wants to find a cure for cancer, mm -hmm. and she's working on that, and then she dies, her soul is wiped clean, mm -hmm. she's got to start all over again. Mm -hmm. But if that didn't happen, she goes back to source, she comes back in another body, all That's the learning right. that she did, she adds to. Mm -hmm. So over a period of 30, 40, 50 years, that can be re-put onto the next one. Mm -hmm. and that's when you get massive advances in technology mm -hmm. and masses in, in science because people, it's that memory is not lost. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're continually being wiped clean. Mm -hmm. That's why everything is stop-go on the earth. I'm not saying it's the case with all near-death experiences, but if I want to um, keep uh, a lie alive, then I have to have people near death, bring them back to life, and then they preach about the white light. And they genuinely and honestly are telling you that they nearly died, and they saw heaven, or they saw angels, and they saw the bright light, and they came back. And that is the way that the lie is perpetuated, because that appears to be genuine, because it's an individual who nearly died and the doctor said well you know you were dead for two minutes or what have you um, and I'm afraid that the experience they are getting is a fabricated experience oh. but they are genuine let me make that clear they are recounting genuinely mm -hmm. what they believe they experienced so you know it's always difficult with these in these fields because they are being honest mm -hmm. about what they have experienced right but they are there to unwittingly keep the story going. There are, to my knowledge, known cases where someone has genuinely died, but there's been interference from a higher level, which mm -hmm. has returned the soul back. And in those instances, sometimes the person has seen the white light, which is the trap, right. that someone has interfered mm -hmm. before they've gone to the trap and returned them. But all that person will imagine is, I saw the white light. Bill Ryan set it up with the goodness of heart. I think Bill Ryan has a full knowledge of what's going on and realised that not only was it a place where people could uh, 
find support together but it could actually be and I use the word weapon I don't mean that nastily but it could be used as a method of change mm -hmm. to um, help direct the planet in a positive way to attempt to counter the negative force that Bill obviously aware of and my view on, on Avalon is I would say people need to still let go of their attachment to physicality mm -hmm. people are still making doing things like judging people and and trying to balance people against known facts and I just ask your soul just ask yourself you know what should I do or how should I do this and that's all you've got to do and and you know if someone is kind to you then that's great and you know I, will, I think it's a wonderful place to be mm -hmm. it's the best site of its kind anywhere in the world um, and but only because it has been supported and helped to be so mm -hmm. I mean I haven't spoken to Bill but I know Bill gets help oh yeah so that's my message is it's it's great and you must maintain it's great Bill you around yeah I'm here thank you good I heard you had some questions. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. I could probably talk with Simon for another several hours. Go on. Okay, all right. So, what I'd like to do is to say hello to everyone here who's listening, either Avalon members. Uh, when you say Avalon, of course, this is a this is short time for the Project Avalon Forum. And um, uh, I'd like to say hello to any Project Avalon Forum members who are listening, and also to anybody else out there, because I'm quite sure this is going to be hosted in a number of places on the internet. And I'd also like to say that I've been listening to this with very great interest, and there's, there's certainly um, uh, probably more good information in this interview conversation that's been taking place than you get in a very large number of interviews out there. There's been a lot of prominence. And, and so I'd really like to thank Simon for that because this is important, complicated stuff. And my entry point into the into the into the all the jottings of notes and questions which I've got in front of me here is to talk about something that Simon mentioned. This is just a little quote of his which I, I wrote down. New Age nonsense. <laughs> And um, in all the questions that Simon's received from many people in this interview and the other interviews and conversations that he's had over a period of years, Simon, I would love to ask you, what is your view of the confusion and the disinformation and the misunderstandings and the, and the, and the mistaken beliefs that you must find yourself surrounded by and reflected back on you in terms of the questions that you're asking. How much of a problem is this and how do you deal with this yourself? It is a problem, Bill, because so many of these people are true believers in what they've hooked onto. Um, you know, they're not the ones who are spreading necessarily the disinformation. They are passionate believers and they believe it's a salvation. And it's incredibly difficult. You cannot um, <clears throat> perhaps immediately um, tell somebody and put them straight because the effect it would have on that person, they would go into denial um, and they would suffer some, some very serious um, issues. Uh, and what I would do is, is to get them to think about where that information has come from, uh, to look at the key points they've been given and to try and get them to um, tell me why they think it's a realistic uh, project or a realistic program or why it has any any sort of resonance with them. Now, if they're genuinely um, searching for something, then they need to search within themselves uh, and not for, for some, some fabulous system that's going to help them. Um, my own understanding is that it was a something spread if not by the CIA somebody very similar to the CIA uh, in terms of attempting again to deflect people from looking into themselves or thinking about the reality uh, and 
and with the advent of, of YouTube and the internet, it is an incredible problem. And sometimes I have to walk away from it, Bill, because I can't convince someone to, to, to reevaluate, and I just have to walk away from it. I think that's a really good summary, actually. It's very hard, indeed, sometimes, when you've been asked a question, and the whole premises and background for the question are flawed. Like, this is the sort of how do you stop beating your wife question. You have to go right back to the premises of which is being asked from and, and, and help the, the asker of the question to realize that their whole basis of understanding is wrong. And of course, this is one of the problems, isn't it? That, that you probably see yourself as a guide and a teacher as opposed to only an informer and a relayer of information. Would you say that's right? Yes. And how do you handle the responsibility of that? Because sometimes I wake up in the morning and think, this is an enormous responsibility I've got. And I'm, I'm asked so many questions and I can't even answer some. Sometimes I don't even get around to answering any of them at all. And there's so many people out there who are sincerely asking questions and it's almost impossible to deal with it all. How do you handle that yourself? Um, because each person <clears throat> who is genuine is asking a question that is vital to themselves and therefore it needs to be answered um, and it doesn't matter whether it's one question or, or a thousand questions they have to be answered because they are vital to that individual um, and all I can do oh, the gonna go. <laughs> all I can do is um, honestly tell them what I have learnt either from security sources here on earth because my, my mother used to work for MI5 and my grandfather worked for MI6 and still have friends who, who pop in and visit um, or talking about visits from off-worlders. Uh, I'm not a researcher so the answers I give are those answers that I truly believe to be the case um, and I'm very very aware that and that's why I always choose my words so carefully that you can lead people down the wrong path you can lead people to make decisions which are not good for them and so it's it's incredibly important that that individual makes their own decisions um, and that the information they get is something they add to everything else and I always say to people, ultimately ask your soul, ask yourself what you think is right. Um, and that's how I do it, Bill. That's a really wonderful answer. Thank you for that. One of the things which you said, which I really want to underline, what you were talking about going into the light after you left the body. There's so many tricks and traps and layers of deceit and layers of deception all over the universe. People say as above, so below, and I always say, well, as below, so above. You've got so many layers of deception and intrigues and agendas and different groups on this planet. Mm. Why would we not think it's exactly the same everywhere else as well? Yes. I've got a question which is of quite some interest to myself. Um, one of the, the things I've been watching for many years, as you have and many others have, is the multi-trillion dollar program, which you're aware of, of the construction of the deep underground bases, the deep underground cities. Not only uh, with the Americans, they've got them in China, they've got them in Russia, and some of them really are quite large. They've got a lot of stuff down there. And recently, Alex Jones has been drawing a lot of attention to the work of Joel Skousen who has written an important book called Strategic Relocation. And his basic premise, and he feels absolutely sure of this, is that the grand strategic plan of whoever it is who's controlling this planet is to deliberately provoke or set up or instigate World War III, a major nuclear war, so that this in itself I think someone's just pull the plug on Bill. Hello Bill, can you hear? 
I think the NSA must have got angry, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last thing you heard me say, and then I'll continue. You, you mentioned strategic relocation and the different countries yes. and Third World War, and then you cut off after Third World War. Okay, right. So, what he strongly believes and has analysed, he's a very intelligent, well informed man, what he suggests that the plan is for a major nuclear war which would be deliberately provoked. It would be engineered as a survival war, but with the justification that then you bring in martial law, then you bring the new world order, then the so-called freedom fighters will all be arrested as terrorists, and that's what the camps are for. And that that's like the, the sort of major global traumatic event that would usher in everything that they wanted. So. I have two questions about that. First of all, and it's actually connected with the question of multiple alternative timelines and freedom of choice and that whole complexity. Do you see this as being possible, inevitable, or would this be prevented by extraterrestrial agencies who would say, no, nope, that's breaking the rules of the game? No, it's, it's possible. Um, most definitely is it possible. The, the, the problem is that those people who are implementing the plan are themselves lied to because their understanding is that after a limited nuclear war they would then emerge to be the sole rulers of the remaining humans on the planet. What they don't know is they're even being duped because the whole project is to keep them underground so that they remain underground and then they evolve into something that's not very human at all. Um, but, but they wouldn't do that unless they, they thought there was a carrot at the end of it. And the carrot for them is, oh, well, it's okay because we can emerge out of the ground and we will be rulers of all we survey. If you told them the truth, they wouldn't go down that road. Now, that's the elite group that um, is on its own. There's a separate elite group that wants to retain the status quo that doesn't want the nuclear war, um, that wants to control humanity by other forms. Um, so that, that are the two groups, and I know what you're saying, I absolutely agree with that, Bill, because um, you know e even people who are uh, very wealthy film stars are, are know that they have had their bunkers already built. Um, and so it's not just, people think about the Illuminati, it's just not the top, top notch, it's actually a, quite a sizable group of people who um, have booked a ticket, for want of a better word, um, but think they're just going to emerge into the sunlight and everything's going to be fine. Right. But you're still saying that, that the outcome of this game, so to speak, is not yet certain, that there are possibilities that could go in every which way. Yes, because, Bill, if, 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 if outside interference was to so actively change uh, that outcome, then really we'd have lost total free will. So I would grade it as a possible. Yeah. Now earlier on, you described the mantis as as arbiters, which is a very interesting word. Um, you use an analogy of an umpire or, or a referee of a game. Mm -hmm. That implies that there are rules and agreements of the game. I presume we're talking about the way that the game is played here on planet Earth. Mm. What is it that would be such a violation of the rules of the game that interference would be required? Hmm. Humans making a decision, whatever that might be, and they've not been given the truth. Right. Could you give a theoretical example of that? Just to straight. Um, if you were to say, for argument's sake, to a, uh, a general, um, we'll talk about what we were saying earlier, I want you to move this nuclear weapon from this facility and uh, I want you to pass it across to this group of freedom fighters. Don't worry, they're not going to blow it up. Everything's fine. And the general then does that, then there would be interference because the general had not been given the full truth. If the general is told, take this, this weapon and we're going to blow it up, then that is a, a full freedom of choice. 
So when somebody is being asked to do something, but they're not being given the full import of, of the real intention behind it, then outside forces would come in to balance it. Even after the balance, if those people still wish to destroy themselves, they will destroy themselves because it was a level playing field and they made that choice having had all the information. Now that's on one timeline. <coughs> that's on one timeline. Um, at the moment we're on a, a relatively good timeline um, and the, the interference, a positive interference, is maintaining us on that positive timeline. The negative influence is attempting to pull us off those tracks and put us back onto the timeline we were on some 15 years ago, something like that. And so that's really where, where the energetic battle is. Right. So the rebalancing job of the arbiters, as it were, mm -hmm. is to make sure that all the information is available to assist humanity to make balanced, responsible, optimum choices. It's not a question of them muscling in to physically interfere. Mm -hmm. It's an energetic rebalancing. That's yes. What Yes, that's what I believe. And what that then implies is that you yourself are an asset in that rebalancing process, right? Correct. And how many, maybe this is an impossible question to answer, but you'll get where it's coming from. How many others are there, or what proportion of others are doing the same job? We are deliberately not told because you, have a, you would have a security breach bill um, one person cannot know and cannot be used as a connection to another because if you if you had that connection if one person was taken out or corrupted it would give the enemy an access to everybody else on the planet so each individual operates in a bubble so that if they are compromised they don't break down the whole system <laughs> the wonderful answer okay I love it but it would be reasonable for you to suspect that there are many people performing this function all independently, but in different cultures, different languages, using different media. Um, would you say that's reasonable to assume? I, 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 I would definitely say that that is the case, although each individual or each individual groups who have joined together would each have formulated their own way of assisting um, and would be doing it. For instance, there are groups of people on the planet who are attempting as we speak to reduce the radiation pollution coming up from Fukushima. Um, there are groups of people who are attempting to um, change many, many things that they see as negative. So they are operating um, in a different way from me but it is for the same outcome, it is for the outcome for, for, for humanity to be in a position to make a choice. Um, so yes, I, 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 I would agree with you, Bill. Okay, here's a question that you may have been asked before, such an arbiter occupying a human body, or are you a human who's agreed to assist? Um, and they made it very clear to me that my soul is composed of three parts um, as a percentage, 33%, 33% reptilian, 33% mantid, and 33% human. Um, people who are in the know say they've never seen such a, a complex creature that's surviving. In other words, it technically is not possible I should be falling to bits. Um, it, it had to be balanced because it has to be free will. No one part of me must be more dominant than another part. Although certain situations require that particular part of me to become dominant. Um, my choice as a small boy, when I was asked to choose between my mentor being a reptilian, draconis reptilian or a mantid, I chose the mantid. Therefore the mantids are my mentors. Um, I let that clock go. I have a very, very strong memory of 1971 when um, I was away for two days and had what people would describe a UFO experience um, and had gone public with the sole agreement or agreement that I made with the Mantis. Um, and I made that agreement because they are my family. So the soul 
the 33% that resides in my body at some point resided in their mantis body a very long time ago and I am merely fulfilling a, a, a council-wide decision that was made a very long time ago ready for when humans reached the point they reach now um, and there as you said Bill there are many many people doing their own thing um, and doing it for the good okay going back to the reptilians then um, does this imply that not all reptilians are actually operating to the same agenda but to just describe all reptilians with one broad brush actually would be very um, unfair to everything and everyone that all the reptilians are. But we're just talking about the actions of the different factions. Is, is that right or do I have that wrong? Uh, it is right. I mean, my, my uh, experience of with what I would refer to or researchers would refer to as the Draco reptilians, these are the, the most negative uh, reptilians that interact on Earth. But I'm also... Uh, aware of and have met what I call native reptilians um, and there's one other group of reptilians from another star system um, they are all on a sliding scale negative to humanity um, but just as in humans some re rebel I suppose that's the right word against the teachings or against their culture and against their ritual and their ceremony and set themselves up it's much harder for them because they have a connected mind um, and it tends to be uh, small groups on outlying positions but they then will attempt to connect with humans because they are from a background that doesn't see any harm in connecting with humans and interfering with humans they will physically come in if I can use that word for the good um, and do things that perhaps you know you might be surprised that but um, ultimately their goal is not they care about the humans necessarily but they are just at war with the the larger group so it's almost as if it's um, a way of getting back at the larger group got it there's an experience which I had back a number of years ago and I met Barbara Lamb do you know Barbara Lamb? I don't know her but I, I've seen her I think some YouTube clips I think Book. I think she wrote a book. She did, I believe. She's a very wonderful woman who's worked for many years as a counsellor and a therapist for people who've had experiences and contacts that they find very hard to integrate. Okay. And I happened to bump into her at a conference and I asked her whether she herself had had any interesting experiences or whether she was just a counsellor. And she told me the most extraordinary story of how she was in her bedroom alone and a reptilian materialized physically in front of her in her bedroom held her hand for a minute silently in front of her and communicated with her that he had been bred specifically for the purpose of making contact with certain humans and letting them know that not all reptilians were hostile and once she really got that then the, th <laughs> then the scripture just disappeared and I was privileged to hear that information from her and so that's been a reference point for me, uh, basically to support what you're saying. That there are at least small groups of reptilians that are not um, that are not hostile, in the sense that we have been educated to believe that they all are. Yes. I think I think what I would say is that um, if the humans on on planet Earth are freed, or they freed themselves, then it's not very good for their reptilian overlords because they will be thrown out and I think a, a number of creatures in the know are deciding if they want to be on a lifeboat or not do they want to remain on the ship or do they want to try and um, get away and try and change sides if you like now um, the, the, the major groups are not changing they cannot change they're so stuck in their ways but other groups um, who perhaps observe what's happening on earth from afar um, are making some very important choices as to where they want to be in terms of evolution um, whether they want to remain in their position or whether they wish to uh, use the opportunity that, that will exist 
when humans finally evolve, whether these other races want to get in on the back of that and to be carried forward. And as it stands at the moment, the reptilian group is excluded from piggybacking with the humans. Got it. Okay. But there are some signs of change and awakening in certain groups out there. Yes. Got it. Let me switch to a different topic that I think you touched on when you were answering another question from Corellia. And it's about the Old Testament God, as it were. About what the Old Testament God was really saying, representing, what he was trying to do, who he was. And somewhere in there, there's a question about who Jesus was, where he came from, and what is that real story, and why has that been so suppressed? And of course, we know that so much has been altered and mistranslated and mythologized and so on and so forth, and we're left with this hodgepodge of documents that's all been kind of shoehorned together into the Bible. <clears throat> the days on Earth when there was more than one ruler, alien ruler, um, and the planet was divided up into quadrants or sections that were ruled. Um, since that time humanity has developed and has become more adult and therefore the, 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 the control has had to advance to keep pace with the development of humanity and to try to second judge it and be ahead of it. So the um, the ruling god, the reptile god, with all the values that that we still have as as, as creatures on this planet, um, was becoming outdated uh, because human spirit was advancing even back then, evolving and changing, and it was necessary to um, bring forth a new icon um, which would capture uh, humans for the next two thousand years. Uh, the difference was that when the, the creation of, of, of the idea or the value of Jesus, it was almost like a, um, a double bluff. It was almost like a, an enemy within because the, um, the, the code or the program for Jesus uh, wasn't quite the way that the ruling elite had, had required of it. And therefore it began to work against the very system that had created it to control in a in a more um, almost a new, new age in, in relation to the to the old god way. So I see both both as a construction uh, to control, but the second program was hijacked by exterior forces uh, so that it wasn't as effective. And in fact, it was more beneficial to humans. Um, Interestingly enough, I was told very clearly that the, the Roman Empire was created purely and simply to ensure that Christianity got throughout the whole globe. And once Christianity was seeded in every country, then the Roman Empire could collapse and fall. Um, so that's my take on it, Bill. I don't know if that, that's of any help. Very interesting what you say about the Roman Empire. When you're talking about the seeding of Christianity, presumably you're talking about the seeding of the, 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 the altered, corrupted form. Yes, yes, absolutely. To do with Jesus' real message, right? Correct, yeah. What do you know about the role of Mary Magdalene in relation to the Jesus story? <laughs> um, Mary Magdalene. Um, well, I can only tell you what I've been told, Bill, and that may not match with what, what, what you, 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 you hear or think. <clears throat> Um, Mary Magdalene was uh, chosen to create a hybridized child and that's that's all I know about her. This is a child that's fathered by Jesus? All I can tell you is what I've said, that's all I know, that it was, the whole okay. object of that was to create a hybridized child. Okay, do you know anything about the purpose or the function of that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just let that clock chime. <coughs> if you if you create a, a creature that is so in tune with the earth, it can through its consciousness alter 
the earth and I don't mean the physical earth if you create um, a ma I just call it a mast call it like a radio mast for want of a better word and it it can hold and disseminate the entire consciousness or direct the consciousness of of the human population if you can corrupt that you can direct um, that energy to take the human race away from its its pure its proper course but in order to do that you have to have something that is made of that material that is made of that consciousness and is accepted by that consciousness and time and time again what's happened is that individuals have been used to attempt to uh, take lock stock and barrel take the whole uh, agenda off um, to, to something that's rather negative but you have to have it it has to be created of the material to be part of the material um, and so often the, the battles that are fought is on how that um, that creature lives its life what its teachings are what its values are um, and to maintain its integrity and, and in many cases these creatures have to have a tremendous amount of off-world uh, genetic material I don't just use the word DNA genetic material because they have to um, be able to survive in the third reality, fourth dimension, and the fourth dimension for a period of time, um, and their their energetic soul, their energetic signature, is vibrating, not necessarily at a faster rate, but it is re resonating at a different rate from the body. So often, uh, these creatures, their parents. Um, will always they'll never know who the parents are or there'll always be some strange story about the parents uh, and that is what I understand and that's about all I could really tell you Bill okay that sort of leads to what's going to be my last question and that is that several times you've used the word ascension mm -hmm. and my own stance about that word is it's a really dangerous word to employ because it means so many different things to different people and it's been so muddied and, and abused and co-opted into a lot of what you call new age nonsense. Mm. But clearly when you use the word ascension, the ascension of humanity or whatever, there's something very specific that you're talking about. And I wonder if you could define it and clarify it to remove any possible misunderstanding or misidentification of the word yeah I, I tend to use words I suppose that I expect people to understand and to um, grasp um, it's like I use the word ET because I know people understand it although it's not actually technically correct for all the groups um, in a way it's ascension in the sense that it's advancement and I think that's as far as I would use the term um, humanity's got as far as it can get now it has to make a choice that choice should be its own choice and when when we talk about when I talk about humans I don't just talk about earth humans I talk about the human races that are far more human than earth humans are and the future to come if it's to work out properly uh, in my estimation will be because uh, it's all about souls it's not about the bodies it's about earth human souls existing on a planet where other human bodied creatures have a whole range of souls but predominantly humanoid so therefore I mentioned earlier the Lyran group the Palladian group, the Syrian group, um, which would be able to come in on uh, the advancement of humans and the mantid or mantis group piggybacking because they are stuck in a cul-de-sac, they wish to evolve and so I'm not talking about people running into the street waving their hands in the air shouting hallelujah um, I've ascended I'm referring to uh, humans values changing humans becoming aware of how they've been lied to and tricked and the very people that they put their trust and their faith in 
have for centuries um, been corrupting them and lying to them and instead of falling apart these group of humans have got to basically rewrite their constitution not just the constitution of government but their constitution of themselves who they are how they got here and what the hell they're going to do now and where they're going to go and my great worry is in that crucial vacuum that will occur when the old guard are thrown out somebody else of a negative force may attempt to grab that opportunity and present themselves as a savior uh, and that's why it's very important that, that humanity looks to itself and not to an outside force and I honestly see uh, a positive time ahead where uh, and this is what where people who are genuinely contactees or abductees talk about uh, sharing um, with other races in other words that is when we will come into contact with in an open way other creatures when individual humans are in a position to appreciate their own role and their own position within the, the greater makeup so for me ascension is every individual human having the opportunity to make the choice and a majority of uh, humans making that choice to throw off all the values that that they've been saddled with fabulous Someone should transcribe that and put it on a wall or somewhere because it's a, it's a very beautiful answer. Let me just thank you for all of your work. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your courage. And thank you for the clarity that you've given so many people. And of course, as you'd be the first to say, it's up to them now whether to take advantage of what it is that you're, you're placing before them. Before, before, before you do, I just, I just want to thank you for surviving all the energetic attacks and the attempts of the enemy to turn you away from what you've done. And I am aware of what they've done and what they are doing. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of all the people on this planet because you have had the guts and the determination to create a website which uh, has drawn people to it of a like mind and you pro you know offer a safe environment it couldn't have been done by anybody else bill because you have the expertise and the knowledge and i don't mean technology wise you have that understanding of what it's really about so on behalf of them and half of them bill don't actually know the truth and i just thank you for that <laughs> well, thank you. Listen, if I was physically present in the UK with you right now, I'd just give you a big hug. Aww. And, and thank you for that. Well, thank you so much. If you, if you ever come over, I'm doing Probe. I'm speaking at Probe um, in England in March. So if you're ever over in England, you know you're very welcome, whatever. You can always pop in and visit me, Bill. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand you back to Corellia now to wrap everything up. This is her interview, not mine. And um, let me just close by saying thank you both. This is a very, very high quality interview that we've got here. And I'm very delighted to be a small part of it. Thank you, Bill.